Just about the time you thought everybody had made a guitar out of every substance known to man, we discovered a new one, Fordite. After World War II, the automobile industry got into high gear, manufacturing cars of all colors. And in the process, they had these paint shops where the cars were hand sprayed, and then the finishes were baked on, both the primers and the base coats and the fin uh, finished coats. And as this material built up over the years on the tracks that the cars were pushed through the paint shop on, People realized after a while that you could chip this stuff off and fabricate jewelry out of it. So it became known as Fordite, and we started, we, we had the idea of using it for guitars. First of all, I was like, what the heck is Fordite? I have no idea what Fordite is. When you see it, I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? This looks like you know, it looks like crap when you first, you know, you first start working with it. If you first take it off of the track, it looks like this, which is the last color that it was spray painted. And as you start getting in and all these beautiful layers start coming out, and it's just like, it's mind blowing. But if you slice it in half, it looks like this. And if you polish it, it looks like this. You know, we're using it for, there's some pit guards in there, there's headstock material, there's inlay and all that stuff. But the hardest task of all of it was when we were talking about as we want to do this, not just as accents and accessories on the guitar, as we want to make a guitar out of it. So we're like, how are we going to do that? The first thing we had to do was to find the material in the, in the right size, which was very tricky. Um, most of the pieces are too, way too small for any useful uh, work with a guitar. So the question was, how do we mill it? How do we glue it? How do we stabilize it so it portrays what we want to accomplish? And not only the look, but the tone. Essentially, we book matched the top. We took it and cut it right down the middle and we book matched that. In a sense, it is, it is I mean, we had to treat it like wood, but it, it has a mind of its own. So first thing obviously we have to do is it'll take it to the planer and we'll get where it's a flat edge and kind of see what we're working with. Then it'll go through our bandsaw, you know, and having to find that perfect blade that'll cut through that precisely because this stuff, it'll start chipping and there's sharp edges that are exposed and stuff. So you have to be extra careful. The heat, when you cut the Ford out or you sand the Ford out, you have to get it on wood quick because it's not stable. You get one shot. <laughs> I mean, you got layers and layers. You might have a 800 layers of paint. Once we book match that, we'll glue that to the top of a body. So I know people are thinking out there, actually guitar people out there thinking, how's this thing gonna sound? guitar which is good because uh you know it could be bad so you know anytime you start dealing with exotic materials it can get very un-guitar in a hurry it's a little darker I, by that i mean it's a it's a lot darker than a normal guitar but it sounds like a dark guitar Oh, it's, it's not, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not sure. A lot of mahogany yeah, yeah, and I, I'm I'm a uh, kind of a swamp ash guy when it comes yeah. to. We've used air dried Honduras mahogany, which is like what's 59 Les Pauls are famous for. We've used air-dried swamp ash. Mm -hmm. 
we've used seasoned walnut. We have used rosewoods that we've had in our family for 25 years. You know, we as a family, you know, we've been doing this 43 years. As a family, we always want to keep the soul and the tone and the feel of instruments. That's the key. They're not just the cosmetic, sure it's cool looking, but the, the soul of the instrument has to be right. Dude, look at the back of that thing. It's like a stormtrooper. playing through my amps so there could be a lot of assumptions that are happening there but basing this off of the 60s telly that I was playing before I played these this one's got a like a more pleasant mid-range around like the uh, uh you know that 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 dangerous area of one to two k like guitars in that area this one's got a little it's like less in that range And it makes for nice with the overdrive, really. Like that's what makes the overdrive sound so good with it. Mm -hmm. 